Hello and welcome back to my channel. If this is your first time here, I'm Nurse Alyssa and today we're going to be going over how to prevent mass wound maceration, okay? So that's the tissue around the wound. So how to prevent that from getting macerated, so too wet. But first, if you could hit that subscribe button, it would be greatly appreciated as it truly does help my channel. So let's get started. So maceration occurs when the skin has been exposed to moisture for too long, okay? So it'll look um, almost soggy, it feels soft, it appears whiter than usual. Um, I think we've all had this at one point when we're swimming and our fingers get really wrinkly and white. That's, that's really what it is. It's an oversaturation of water in the skin, okay? So sometimes we get this on wounds and it's around the outside of the wound. So it looks like this down here, um, it has the white tissue, okay? So that's being, it's too soggy, it's too wet. We need to protect this skin, okay? Um, because it will prevent wound healing, okay? This tissue, it's not viable when it goes like this and it will prevent the wound from actually healing, okay? It's also a good uh, medium for bacteria and fungi growth, so we do not want that. It does cause irritation and pain also. Um, it can cause tissue death, dermatitis, wet eczema, okay? Not things that we want, so by identifying people who are at risk for maceration, it allows us to provide proper care and use the proper products, okay? So that's why we always need to be assessing how much drainage is coming from a wound and how we can manage it. Because it's always a balancing act. We have to, we don't want it too wet. We don't want it too dry, right? We want it just eyeball moist. That's, that's exactly where we want it. So maceration can occur anytime the skin is exposed to moisture for too long, okay? So like I was saying, uh, swimming or taking a bath for too long, your tissue, your fingers can get oversaturated and they become white and uh, very wrinkly. Now, other common sources are sweat, exudate, urine, feces, okay? Um, there's so many things that play a role in maceration also. So age, sex, any underlying physical conditions, they can all play a role in this, okay? So for example, uh, somebody who is obese, um, they may have sweat-induced maceration between skin folds um, or people with uh, incontinence um, for urine and feces, they may have maceration in the genitalia area. Now, for people with chronic wounds, they're particularly at risk for maceration around the wound site, okay? Because especially chronic wounds, they put off an exudate. So unlike, so when you first get cut, it's an acute wound, okay? Now, <clears throat> the primary exudate that comes out of these will actually help heal a wound, okay? But with chronic wounds, it's not like that. It actually puts off um, an exudate and it has an enzyme in it, in it that will actually break down the wound, okay? So that's why moisture management with chronic wounds are so important because the drainage that's coming from that wound, it's literally trying to break down outer tissue because of the enzymes in it, okay? Now, chronic wounds that are likely to experience maceration are venous leg ulcers, diabetic foot ulcers, fungating wounds, um, and really just anything that is exudating a lot. So how can wound maceration be prevented? So keeping a moist wound environment has been shown to lead to better outcomes over a dry wound, okay? Studies have shown that it heals faster, um, there's less scarring, reduced risk of infection, um, and then other, other positive benefits. Now, um, even a lot of patients have stated that removal of dressings are less painful when the wound is moist because then they don't stick, right? So 
it's such a balancing act because we want it moist enough to support wound healing, but we want it dry enough to prevent maceration. Okay. <laughs> so like I say, it's this balancing act. Um, the primary way that maceration of the wounds can be prevented is correcting the underlying problem. Okay. So for example, venous leg ulcers, they commonly have a moderate to heavy amount of exudate. So using a compression system, okay, to make sure that there's not excess fluid in the legs because it's going to come out of a weak point, okay, which is that wound. So if we're using compressions or having them elevate their legs, this will prevent that amount of exudate, right? Um, so the goal is to have a dressing that absorbs the exudate preventing the skin around the wound from absorbing it without drying out the wound, okay? So when you have a wound with high amounts of exudate, the dressings need to be changed daily. Now, if we have um, a lower amount of exudate, they can go for a longer period of time, two to three days, um, unless there's infection. You know, you really... You have to use your clinical judgment with this because we don't want to be leaving on a dressing too long and causing maceration because it will cause the wound to get larger. Okay, that is what we're trying to prevent. Um, and then always just educating, educating our patients. Like, hey, if you notice that your dressing is saturated, make sure you're changing that cover dressing. Okay, even if there's, if you're using something underneath it, um, any kind of any kind of, any kind of patch um, that you're using underneath it doesn't need to be changed um, until you go to change it. But as long as they know, like, just change that cover dressing, at least get that changed where it can start absorbing more and prevent damage. So in conclusion, this is why the wound assessment is so uh, important, okay? A full patient's medical history, the cause of the wound, the amount of exudate, the location on the body, these are all so important before ever choosing any kind of dressing, okay? You need all this information to make an informed choice of what we're going to put on the wound um, because that that's the only way. Uh, if we're not doing that, we're just throwing money away really when it comes down to it because we're going to be using maybe too much of something or you know there's there could be better choices that that we can use so we just really we really need to be doing our full wound assessment before ever putting anything on that wound <laughs> so i hope this video did give you a better understanding um why we need to prevent fluid from sitting on a wound and keep a just moist wound, okay? We need to be doing our full wound assessments, making sure that we are using the correct system for that patient. That is why it is so important, so important to get that history first, everything that's going on, and then make your wound choices. Okay. Um, so that's all that I have for this video. I hope you did find it informational and I hope to see you guys in my next video. Bye for now.